I would love if this kind of calculation happened uh, like during the making of the show or, or the, the, you know, I love it like in, um, for example, I, I now know um, Alex Garland, the director of Ex Machina, mm -hmm. and I love it. And he doesn't seem to be some, not many people seem to do this, but I love it when directors and people who wrote the story really think through the technical details. <laughs> Like yeah. whether it's knowing like how things, even if it's science fiction, if you were to try to do this, how would you do this? Uh, like Stephen Wolfram and his son were um, were collaborating with the movie Arrival mm -hmm. in designing the alien language of how you communicate with the aliens. Mm -hmm. Like how would you really have mm -hmm. uh, a math based language that uh, that could span the alien and uh, being and the human being? So I, I I love it when they have that yeah. kind of rigor. The Martian was also big on that. Like the book and the movie was all about like, can we actually, you know, is this plausible? Can this happen? It was all about that. And that can really bring you in. Like the, sometimes the small details, um, I mean, the, the guy that wrote the Martian book is another book uh, that is also filled with those like things that when you realize that, okay, these are, are grounded in, in science can yeah. just really bring you in. Yeah. Right, the, the, like the, the, he has a book about a colony on the moon. a colony on the moon, and he goes about like all the details that would you know be required about setting up a colony in the moon, yeah. and like things that you wouldn't think about, like the the fact that um, they would you know it's hard to bring like uh, air to the moon, say so they, so they wouldn't like how how do you make that breathable, that environment breathable? You need to bring oxygen, but like you 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 probably wouldn't be bring nitrogen so what you do is like instead of having a an at, um an, an atmosphere that is 100 percent oxygen you like decrease the pressure so that you have the same ratio of oxygen on earth but like lowering the pressure here and so like things like water boils at the lower temperature so people would would have coffee and the coffee would be colder like there was a problem in this uh environment in the moon so mm -hmm. like and these are like small things in the book but I studied physics, so like when I read these, I, I, that throws me into like uh, tangents, and I start researching that. And it's like I really like to read books and, and watch movies when they go to that level of detail uh, uh, about I, science. I, yeah, I think Interstellar was one where they also consulted heavily with with a number of. Physicists. Yeah, 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 I think even resulted in, in a couple of papers. A couple of papers about like the black hole uh, visualizations and. Um, yeah, but there's even, and there's even more examples of interesting science around like these fantasy. Uh, 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 we were reading at some point like these guys that were uh, trying to figure out if if the Tolkien's Middle Earth, if it was uh, round, if if it was like a, a sphere, yeah. if it was like a flat, <laughs> flat Earth, <laughs> based on the map, but, yeah, based on the map and some of the references in the uh, in the books, and so uh, yeah, we actually, I think we tweeted about that. You can actually, yeah, we did. Based on the distance between the cities, you can actually prove that uh, that could be like a map of a sphere or like a spheroid, mm -hmm. and and you can actually calculate the radius of that planet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's fascinating. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that, that's fascinating. But the, there's something about like calculating the number, like exactly the calculation you did for for the Battle of Winterfell, is. Um, there's something fascinating about that because that's not like being, that's very mathematical versus mm -hmm. like grounded in physics. Mm -hmm. And that's really interesting. I mean, mm -hmm. that's like injecting mathematics into fantasy. I, there, there's there's something um, I, I see magical about that. And, and that for me, that's why I think it's also when you look at things like, like uh, Fermat's last theorem, like, problems that are very kind of self-contained mm -hmm. and simple to state. Yes. I think like th th that's the yes. same with that paper. It's very easy to understand the boundaries of the problem, you know? Um, and and that for me, that's why those, and that's why math is so appealing. And those like problems are also so appealing to the general public. It's not that they look simple or that people think that they're easy to like solve, but I feel that a lot of the times they are almost intellectually democratic because everyone in, uh, understands the starting point. You know, you look at Fermat's last theorem, everyone understands like, is the, this is the the universe of the problem. And the same maybe with that paper, everyone understands, okay, these are the starting conditions. Mm -hmm. And um, 
and and yeah that the fact that it becomes intellectually democratic and i think that's a huge motivation for people and that's why so so many people gravitate towards these like Riemann hypotheses or from us last year or that simple paper which is like just one page it was very simple and i just talked to somebody i don't know if you know who he is jocko willink who is uh, mm-hmm. this person who among many things loves military tactics so he would probably either publish a follow on paper maybe you guys should collaborate but he would see the funda- the basic assumptions that you started that paper with as flawed because you know there's like dragons too right there's like like you have to integrate tactics mm-hmm. because not it's not it's not a homogeneous system it's not True. i don't take into account the dragons and like and other he would say tactics fundamentally change the okay. dynamics of the system yeah. and so like that's, that's what happened <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah so at least from a scientific perspective he was right but he never published so there you go <laughs>